this month on practice up is it possible that an entire industry is wrong and of course the answer is yes cholesterol is not the cause of heart disease small frequent meals aren't as good as we thought for managing blood sugar regulation and a low-fat diet doesn't do a whole lot for people except give them gallstones but today we're going to be talking about vitamin d is testing for it even accurate in the first place is low vitamin d on a lab really low vitamin d or is it something else what reference range should we be using is it possible that we're causing harm by giving too much vitamin D to people? And if so, what is a more rational dose that we should be giving? All that and so much more. Grab a cup of coffee. This is a good one on this month's Practice Up. Let's just pretend for a minute. Let's pretend that serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D is a great marker for vitamin D status. And let's pretend that we have a solid reference range, which we don't. When you see low 25 hydroxy vitamin D on a lab, virtually everybody just gives vitamin D. I'm going to show you eight reasons right now that low vitamin D on a lab, low serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D is probably not or may not be low vitamin D. It might be something else, and if it is, giving those people vitamin D might actually be a bad idea. So number one, now notice the first word here, adequate calcium intake. What does that mean? Here's a paper that showed that individuals who consumed adequate vitamin D and had a adequate or higher intake of calcium had a lower serum 25-hydroxy vitamin D on a test, and I'll say that in a different way. These individuals would show up with a potentially low serum 25 uh, hydroxy vitamin D on a lab, but it's because they actually had enough calcium and they had enough vitamin D. The individuals that didn't eat as much calcium had a higher level. Who would get vitamin D in this case? But they wouldn't actually need it. The second possibility is suboptimal magnesium status. There are more than one paper that suggests that magnesium is involved in the synthesis and metabolism of vitamin D. It might even be involved in vitamin D binding protein. And low serum or low magnesium levels, when increased by themselves, increased serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D by itself, meaning low serum vitamin D, give magnesium, and vitamin D magically comes up on its own. Number three, how about glutathione or excess oxidative stress? Really cool paper. Look at part of this title. It says glutathione is a novel approach. Glutathione is a novel approach to treat 25 hydroxy vitamin D deficiency. What they found was is giving individuals with low serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D vitamin D or vitamin D and the amino acid L cysteine, that group had better improvements in their serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D deficiency. This paper goes into reasons why, oxidative stress, chronic disease, but they suggest that glutathione, and I'll put it a different way. Actually, let's look at this next slide. When you see low serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D on the lab, is it low vitamin D? Or might it be that somebody is actually eating adequate amounts of vitamin D and calcium? Maybe they have low uh, magnesium status. Maybe they have glutathione deficiency. Maybe it's a combination of these things. But my question to you is, do they need vitamin D? Might it be that if they increase their calcium intake, increase their magnesium intake, and had enough glutathione precursors that perhaps their serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D There's would come up all by itself papers on and they this, didn't quite a few that suggest so that the four, amount of air pollution can actually block some of the ultraviolet rays that are required in order to reach our skin so that we may synthesize vitamin D. And what they typically find is areas of higher air pollution are associated with areas uh, or lower serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. Again, do these people need vitamin D? It could be argued that maybe they do or perhaps they need to move somewhere else. Number five, environmental pollutants. It's not just air pollution. This particular paper looked at some of the NHANES data and found that individuals who excreted in their urine more phthalates or PCBs had lower levels of serum 25-hydroxy vitamin D. So I'll put it another way, people that had higher exposures to certain environmental pollutants had lower vitamin D levels. Once again, do they need vitamin D or do they need to avoid certain environmental pollutants? Do they possibly need to detoxify a little bit? This is a great one. Let's look at favorable bacteria. In this fairly recent paper, they looked at older men. Now follow this. Men that had more favorable bacteria, butyrate, short chain fatty acid, butyrate producing bacteria, had lower serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. In other words, you'd look at their vitamin D level on the lab and you'd say, wow, yours is low, you need vitamin D. Wrong. 
These men who had better bacteria profiles producing more butyrate had higher levels of the 125 hydroxy vitamin D, the active form of vitamin D, and because that was higher, they had lower amounts of serum 25 vitamin D. And if you gave them supplemental vitamin D, you're gonna be pushing that 125 active form higher, potentially causing more problems. Number seven, inflammation. Listen, there are plenty of papers that suggest that serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D is a negative acute phase reactant. What that means is it tends to go down during inflammation, kind of like albumin. And these papers all suggest, or actually they question, is low vitamin D a cause of chronic disease or a consequence of chronic disease? Most chronic diseases are, one of the hallmarks is inflammation. If inflammation puts 25 hydroxy vitamin D lower, on a lab, do they need vitamin D or do they need to get rid of their inflammation? And lastly, this is an interesting one, imbalanced mineral or possible metal status. Now we've already talked about calcium and magnesium. It turns out boron supplementation by itself, trace mineral boron, hardly anybody talks about boron, might increase 25 serum hydroxy vitamin D levels, which means that there's probably other ones that would do it. And vitamin D not only increases the absorption in the gut of certain minerals, it also increases the absorption of toxic metals. Sure, let's load up on a whole bunch of supplemental vitamin D and then increase the, our exposure and increase the absorption of toxic metals. One paper suggested that the level of lead in somebody's body, serum lead, is negatively associated with lower, has lower serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. So again, does that person need vitamin D and possibly absorb more lead in their diet or what they're eating? Or do they need to address the lead levels? So my question to you then is just based on this really quick video and looking at some of the evidence, is low serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D really low vitamin D? Or is it adequate calcium intake and vitamin D intake? Is it suboptimal magnesium status? Is it too much oxidative stress and not enough glutathione? Is it air pollution? Is it environmental pollutants like phthalates and BCBs? Is it favorable gut bacteria, short chain producing uh, of gut bacteria? Is it inflammation? Is it toxic metals? Is it uh, different minerals, or my big question is, is, is it something else? And here's the thing, simply running serum 25 hydroxy vitamin D and seeing it low and giving vitamin D as a supplement, sometimes in really high doses, may be a problem because maybe it's not actually low vitamin D and maybe what we're doing as an industry is a little bit backwards. So we've talked about the unreliability